So back during the pandemic, I had a dream. It was the Apple AR dream. One day, Apple's gonna release their headsets and it's gonna usher in the past iPhone-like era. High demand, low supply, and it'll be a great opportunity for developers who are prepared to ride the wave. That vision, which came out of a foreign post, really excited me. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go. It's a hard journey. Uh, learning programming or iOS or anything for that matter is a really a uh, marathon. It's not a really a sprint. I speak of marathons because there's actually a racetrack in the spot where I am. Let me just show you that. Can you see that? Yeah. So just like that, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So with that in mind, let's get to the video and talk about the three stages which you could apply in your journeys too. So it was during the pandemic that when I first started learning iOS development and the way I learned it was I took a course by Angela Yu. It taught the complete fundamentals of iOS development and then I made a custom roadmap to learn the uh, Apple AR bit as well. Every programmer's dream, especially mine, was to get to a point where you could translate whatever ideas you have in your head and have that kind of superpower where you can build whatever you want. After learning the iOS development through the courses for about two months, I got to that point. That was super exciting. It literally feels like you have this like insanely powerful superpower. But I had like crazy ideas in my head. One click video editor, there was the journaling app I had in mind. I had the stressless games, games for stress relief, and loads of ideas. And I just started building all of them, literally, to my heart's delight. It was the pandemic, everything was locked down. My PhD was nearing its end, so I had a lot of time. Uh, but one thing I did differently during this time was not only did I start building, but while building, also started documenting and putting out YouTube videos. And that was a double-edged strategy. In my head, it was like a building, but if I document and share what I learned, I will expand my influence, and which will serve me in very beneficial ways, especially for my career. And I like to call this stage the profitable portfolio. The reason is because not only did I start building to my heart's light, but also started documenting the journey and also making money off, off my building. And the way I approached it was I started up taking freelance gigs on Upwork. Over like a course of one or two months after graduation, I made about $7,000, which is not a huge money, but at least some money that you made out of your skills. And this was very beneficial in finding a job. The reason was because when I started freelancing, I decided freelancing was the end goal, right? This is what I'm gonna do for my active income while I'm building up my businesses. And I'll just do that forever. But soon enough, I realized that freelancing is really a double-edged sword. Like you can't really dedicate a lot of time to your side projects while you're freelancing because it's literally a 24 day job. You got to build and then you got to also find clients. So it's a lot of work, a lot of upside, but a lot of work. And that's what really uh, made me decide like after two or three months of trying freelancing that I need to take up a job. The fundamental thing is you need to convince someone that you could build stuff. A degree is not enough. Yes, I had a PhD, which is pretty impressive, but that's not enough by itself. They need to have confidence that you could build stuff for them. You could create value out of thin air as soon as possible, ideally in day one of the job. For that, I mean, you've probably heard it like many times said over the internet, you need a portfolio. And now you could see how my previous stages all played a factor. While I was learning and building on my own ideas, I had multiple apps that I didn't finish, but at least one of them, I made it all the way to the app store so that I could at least have one in my portfolio. That was my first app in my portfolio. Using that, I got client work. And the client work was a portfolio in itself because I had four projects for which people paid me for. It was not my idea. People actually paid me to do it, which is even a more stronger argument in your job interviews. Because if people paid you to do jobs, that means it must have been a relatively important job. So, so my point is the freelancing and the building and the YouTube channel with all the videos and all the thing which shows passion for your work all played a factor. It was all part of my interview pitching and all part of my storyline. Using all these three portfolios and projects and side stuff that I did while doing my PhD, the interview was more or less, I would say easy because it was really easy to convince people that you're passionate about it and that you have a strong vision on why you want this career change. I made about 30 applications, got four or eight, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think eight uh, interviews, no, sorry, 12 interviews and three offers. 
And one final tip here, if you do get offers, if you do start applying for jobs, it's good to strategize your job hunt in a way that you could line up all the offers you get around a similar time frame. So for me, I had two offers during the same week, which was good because that means I could negotiate one against each other. For me, when I started learning, my aim was I'm going to build a apps and I'm going to have lots of downloads and I'm going to live off the money there and wait for the Apple era and build from there. That was the plan. Very naive plan, didn't work out that way. Then my second plan was freelancing. I'll do freelancing until the Apple era comes and build stuff on the side. Well, that didn't work out as well. It was more work than I thought. But eventually, both these apps, jobs, videos, and freelance gigs all served to on getting a good software engineering job as my first job after graduation. This reminds me of a lesson I've learned long back, which is when one door closes, another one opens. And more often than not, the one that opens is usually a better door.